So we've got something a little special this week. I like special. We're, we're going to teach you all about the greatest threat to your genitals in the modern era. Donald Trump? No. Oh. But almost as ubiquitous and obnoxious. First, let's get our intro going here. Each week, after Radio Dead Air audience brought worldwide airwaves, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. The segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong. And this crazy. first story is something everyone has said to us. Everyone, everyone, everyone sent me this story. Oh no. Everyone, you should all be very afraid. Because lurking in your home is some sort of snowblower, apparently. Huh? What was that noise? You, oh, that. You sound really... I sound what? You sounded really weird for a minute. I always sound weird. It's me. Lurking in your home. Do you know what your children are bringing home every single day? A threat. No. Is a it something terrible? A terrible threat. The, ch oh, the no. children are bringing a threat to your vagina. Is it wasp nests? It is not wasp nests. It is fidget spinners. No. Dan has one. No. You monster. Fidget spinners, the fidget spinners can become lodged in your vagina. But wait, that's not all. Not only are fidget spinners lurking, waiting to be lodged in your most tender woman parts, they're also going to cut off your dick. <laughs> oh my God. How, how could this be possible? Well... It's not. Spoiler alert. I'm really happy that second one's not. I like the not. ad on the side of there where it looks like you can increase the size of your penis with phasers. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the one dance on I wish you could zoom in on that. I know you probably can't because it's a dick. But it really looks like they're shooting little tiny lightsabers into this dick. Yeah, I see. It's right there. It's, there yeah. it is. It's right here on this far side of the page. There's yeah. laser dick. Okay, what's going on here, people? What could possibly... Guess what, everybody? Lots and lots and lots of you uncritically and unflinchingly fell for some world-class fake news. Seriously. Now, how do you know? It just How do you know it's fake? How do you know? Well, guys, there's some very simple ways you can tell when a story isn't real. Samantha Brown, you have to get out of here. Your vagina is fidgety. <laughs> oh. problem, it's a tough one. The fidgety vagina is a tough problem. <laughs> All right. The first thing that stands out about both these stories is if you read them, nowhere listed within the story anywhere is a proper name. No one's proper name. Not the, the alleged victims, not their doctors. Not their neighbors that are mentioned in the story, not the actual people who who were were not who reported on it. It says according here, here's another uh little bit to just according to local media reports. It says right there. Really? It doesn't link to those media reports. It just yeah. says according to local media reports. You always gotta look for a link to a more reputable source. The next thing about the site is if you go to their about page and, and you'll notice there's some there's some striking similarities between United News and Weekend Herald, almost as if the two sites are using the exact same website format. Let's talk about another way that these websites are easy to spot. Um, every single other story aside from the one that brings you here. British man changes name and gets new passport to avoid paying airline admin fee. A special type of honey is helping herpes victims fight the virus. 
New study reveals the simple way for men to last longer in bed. These are all ads disguised yeah. as news stories. Here's how this works. Sites... This is crazy trick to lose weight by eating nothing but avocados and lard. <laughs> Here's how this bullshit works. Uh, sites like the Weekend Herald crop up their cheap as hell to create doesn't take much to host them. And then they will latch on to some aspect of popular culture, like the fidget spinner, and create a fake news story that is calculated to go viral on Facebook, which this did because every single person sent me this story. And what you do when you click when you click on that site, when you visit the site, they get ad revenue from this. They get money. They get you money. Give them money. They are making money off your gullibility, and they're also breaking down any confidence people have in any kind of media, whatever remains, with this stupid batch of lying bullshit. Now, that said, we already, I already found on Etsy a butt plug with a, finish, with a fidget spinner Turn attached it. to you the spo of You're spoiling everything. So You're spoiling it's only, tonight. It's only a matter of time. Because I was going to bring... That was our very next story. I was going to oh. say... My segue power is remaining intact. I was going to say... Fidget spinners don't quite get off the hook just yet because... Because if it's a thing, somebody will figure out how to fuck it. Yeah. There, there is now a fidget spinner butt plug. It's not particularly complicated because it's simply a fidget spinner... Glued to a butt. Glued to a butt. And I really, can you imagine any sort of sexual proclivity revolving? Just, you're fucking. Like, have you ever been pegging your boyfriend and you just, you're just bored? <laughs> Hi. Mm -hmm. I never get bored pegging you, baby. Dan? Dan, I'd hide that fidget spinner if I were you. <laughs> that, that's all I'm saying. I'd put that. Like, who are the people? Because it's not for the person wearing it to use. No. Because you have to be really flexible. <clears throat> so it's for the person behind you. And like, I'm having trouble figuring out the situation in which you have inserted a butt plug into somebody, but are then bored and can't focus. Hey, you're having sex. You're just like, well, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, look. Spin, spin, like, spin. That's man, me. You can't focus. I used to say, like, you know, the whole, when the whole tramp stamp thing started off, that people should people should put like be really considerate to their partners, put like Bazooka Joe comics or something back there, <laughs> you know, or so, like instruction. That would be really that good. would be another good one too. But yeah, yeah. But, so yeah, like your likes and dislikes, sexually speaking. So yeah, for the record, Wait, nope. I'd be really fucking offended if you needed a fidget spinner on the butt plug you're going to use on me. <laughs> like that would probably kill the mood. Just a bit. Just saying. Du duly noted. <laughs> but uh, just for the record, no, a woman did not get a fidget spinner lodged in her vagina. No, a guy did not cut his dick off with a fidget spinner. You've got to. They're going to start shoving them up. Like there, when this year's are. list of things. ER doctors have pulled out of people comes out. Fidget, fidget spinners. spinners are going to be on there. It's going to be on. Be a fidget spinner down somebody's throat, and either a fidget spinner up a vagina or an ass, if not both. But it is not this day. But not this day. There may come a day when the sense of man will fail, but it is not this day. Uh, now, let's move on to something else quickly. Um, I guess you could do the butt plug like if you were really if you were like Andre the Giant strong, you could use it to like pick up your partner and spin them. <laughs> There's a visual. Like I have a gay friend who used to refer to really skinny guys as spinners because you just put them on and spin them. So you could. Just put it in and then spin them. I said moving along. We're leaving the <laughs> moving along. We're moving Sorry. the fuck along. I get fixated. I need a fidget spinner. Has there ever in the history of mankind been something good for you that you snort? 
ever. He uses a nasal spray for his allergies. That's that's a and spray. Really help. That's a spray. That's not like snuff or true. Or, it doesn't or, come in like a powdered form. Or cocaine. Or yeah. or guess what? Well, that's a nice mist. Chocolate. You can snort chocolate? Where? Snortable chocolate arrives in the US. I'm in. I'm in. One of the first things you notice after opening a jar of Coco Loco is that it looks like hot chocolate mix. Snorting a line is of the this brown. Is by the Four Loco people? God, I hope not. Because it's spelled the same way. Snorting a line of the brown powder with specks of white confirms its familiar flavor, followed by a rush of energy. Americans are beginning to see the product alongside candy bars and energy pills at local shops. Florida company Legal Lean moves to take a European club drug trend, uh, trend mainstream. Snorting chocolate has received significant international attention since 2007 when Belgian chocolatier Dominique Persson created a device he calls the Chocolate Shooter to snort cocoa. Uh, health conscious European club goers separately use raw cacao, cacao in cacao. pills, cacao in pills and drinks for its mild, mildly euphoric, energizing effects. Okay, guys, guys. Wait, it has mood lifting. Anandamide and muscle relaxing magnesium. Magnesium is good for anxiety. They are all probably wonderful for you. Except when you snort the shit. That this hole, this this is not an in hole. Air. Air is it. That's all that goes in here. Air. But what if you're on a diet? It's you need all that chocolate. It's I mean clearly I'm not on a diet. It's still not. This is not a hole. Where this is the only thing that goes here is air. Things come out of this hole, but nothing pleasant comes out of this hole. Or like an intubation tube would go in there. That's not. I guess that's an extension on air. Yeah, and if they have to put something, if they have to put that up your nose, you're in trouble. That's a bad thing. This, I don't know, man. I'm willing to try it. You do not. It do not. It says it gives you energy and a good mood. Tara, do not. God, nothing good comes from snorting things. In the the that your, your camera on Skype has frozen on a, on a really concerned face. Oh, well, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> Tara, snorting things are bad for you. That's, that's... That's the point. Chocolate. Things don't go up your nose. That's not the hole. Chocolate. This is the hole for the chocolate. <laughs> this is the chocolate hole. And there's our title. <laughs> this is the chocolate hole. <laughs> <laughs> but this, see? That's what happens when things are, go up in there. Well, no, the thing he puts up in there is supposed to stop that. Well, no, but the, the reason he puts that other thing up there is because other things are getting up there. Why do I have to? to I mean, Tara, not with a fidget spinner on the end of them. At two, Tara. Come on. Anyway, moving right along. <coughs> You know, I would like to think if my neighbors saw someone attempting to break into my house, they would be kind enough to call the police. You'd like to think. Except there is one case where you would not want the police involved. There's a few. The people attempting to break into your house are there to steal all your meth. That's a lot of fucking math, dude. Police are investigating a reported burglary have seized almost one million dollars worth of methamphetamine lace lollipops. That's like a whole season of Breaking Bad. Six hundred pounds of the homemade candy drug mixture melted into various shapes, including Batman and Star Wars figures, were discovered in a Houston home. Police say the drug had a street value of almost one million dollars. 
Concerned neighbor called police Monday to report the house is being burglarized. When officers arrived at the scene, they discovered a male and female removing the lollipops from the house. So many narcotics in their vehicle, they couldn't close the back hatch of their car. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of fucking drugs. And the people doing the stealing were not the people who lived there. No. The seizure is the first kind in the area. Uh, the house was where they manufactured the drug. There's evidence they were making these in the kitchen. D don't do this. Meth. I still don't get the whole meth thing. <laughs> How many years we've been doing this? I, I don't get what the upside is. Because it can blow you up while you're making it. And then you do it for a high that, as far as I can tell, is similar to cocaine, but not as good. Mm. And then you get fucked up skin and your teeth fall out. Like, yeah. where's the upside? When's the good part? You know, I mean, fuck, at least at least if you're doing if you're doing pot. And you stop doing pot, you're fine. You stop doing meth, give me dentures. But and really, just to drive it home, they're making meth candy. If the meth doesn't get <laughs> the the fucking candy oil. I mean, god damn. That is a clever delivery system, though, if you don't want to smoke it. I do. I, I do, however, love that. The fa that, that some very nice... And just imagine, like, some nice little old lady next door is going, Hello, officer, they're trying to steal this <laughs> not my neighbor's oh, candy. They're stealing all my neighbor's candy. And they're such a nice couple. Yeah. They offered me some Molotov pops the other day, but I'm diabetic, so I couldn't have them. But still. Uh, God damn. 600. Do you think it's more or less dangerous to make meth in candy form? It's as dangerous because there's still toxic fucking fumes. Yeah. I mean, if it, not just not just the meth smoking itself does to you but the byproducts of manufacturing meth are so fucking dangerous yeah. that whenever the police have to go in to clear out a meth lab they bring a hazmat truck because it's it's like industrial toxic fucking waste which should tell you all you need to know about whether or not you should inhale or ingest this thing no. Like, the cops won't touch it without a hazmat suit. But yeah, light it on fire and inhale it. Why the fuck not? Now, the next story is... I've never been in the military, so I don't understand military protocol on this. But this... Oh, well, yeah, Dan's going to be pissed already. I, I already know uh, Dan's going to be pissed about this one. <laughs> it's slowly turning around. I see that face a lot. I I am I am astonished. But how much money went into this one guy's ridiculous bull? I, I there's not even a, a reason given for why he did this. Shiloh's sailor reported overboard, now found hiding in the engine room. Oh, I heard about this. I heard he was found. Sailor from the cruiser Shiloh, who Navy officials said fell overboard last week, triggering a massive search and rescue effort, has been recovered on board. Presumed dead after going missing June 8th, gas turbine system technician mechanical third class Peter Mims reportedly hid himself in one of the engine rooms. It is unclear wow. how Mims survived the week in the engineering space or where he was hiding. He will be blown off Shiloh for evaluation soon. Mims' disappearance prompted a massive 50-hour search and rescue effort off the coast of Japan that included Japanese Coast Guard and Naval Forces, helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft from the carrier Ronald Reagan, along with Navy P-8 Maritime Patrol aircraft, the destroyers uh, John S. McCain and McCampbell, and the Reagan itself, all assisted Shiloh in the search for the missing sailor. Holy crap. Why? Do we know why? We don't know why! I looked up, I looked, even the Washington Post is covering this story. And no one has been able, no, no one has said why this mother... 
It's been a rough week for the Navy, man. <laughs> they had that collision and seven sailors died. Yeah. Which is and why. near Japan, too. Which well, is. He's going to be an E1 again. Yeah, this. E1. I don't know what that means. That means he's busted he's now. He's going to lose rank and money and. Wouldn't he just get kicked out for that? I mean, isn't that the same as going AWOL? No. I mean, Although, he abandoned his post. And how many millions of dollars did it take? To run all of those large fucking aircraft carriers and and boats. What was, and what was the plan? Were you just going to hide until the boat ported and sneak <laughs> off and start a new life? <laughs> I mean, at that point, it would have been easier just to jump off the boat. Yeah, not a great plan. This this is what the f you have, you are in so much trouble, man. Man, you are not going to be popular with the rest of your crew. That is all of the trouble. I mean, whatever you might be involved in, whatever you might be deciding, you know what? I don't like the Navy. Okay, fine. But there are ways to get out of it without in causing an international incident. Yeah. yeah they, they get real mad when you do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, anything that you pop in, no, I got the perfect plan. I got this all figured out. That's never, never, That's never. That's a bad plan, bro. It's, yeah, any plan that starts out with, okay, I've got this great idea. I'm going to hide in the engine room. I mean, God damn. You just, you, you, you just pissed off some, oh, okay, speaking of pissed off so many people, our last story this week. Considering it's the LAPD, I just have to laugh because God, God bless, fuck it, they deserve it. Um, so uh, I'm just I'm not even, I'm not even gonna build up to this one. I'm just gonna let the story happen. Teen police volunteers steal LAPD cars, patrol Los Angeles. They're not that dumb. Three teenagers in a program for those who may want to become officers stole three Los Angeles Police Department vehicles and went on patrol around the city before leading authorities on wild pursuits that ended with crashes. The trio, two boys and a girl, ages 15, 16, and 17, gamed the system and used a vacationing sergeant's name to sign out stun guns and radios and drive the cars right out of a station house parking lot. Wow. Police are investigating whether the teens impersonated officers and pulled over drivers. The three were arrested after two pursuits ended with crashes. The third police car was later recovered around the corner from a police station. Can you imagine getting pulled over by a fucking 15-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am, can I see your license and registration? Like, go fuck yourself. But you don't know. They're in a real cop car. They probably had a uniform. Like, you don't fucking know. This is the plot of a bad movie. It is. I think that movie was... Let, the let's Be Cops is what it was called. <laughs> oh, I was thinking The Mod Squad. No, Let's Be Cops. Where they took the young, hot criminals and made them young, hot cops. The teens were arrested on suspicion of vehicle theft and other charges. One was wearing a bulletproof vest that had been taken from a police station. How the fuck did they get away with this? That says quite a fucking bit about the <laughs> LAPD. <laughs> like, y'all are asleep at the wheel. Hey, yo, we got this sign. This, this paper here says we can take some stun guns and radios. Sure, kids, have fun. It's signed. The paperwork's in order. No! Fuck no! I mean, I I appreciate cosplay. I know a lot of work goes into it, but this is not the way, children. This this is not... <laughs> I love people who are going, L-A-R-P-D. Yeah, LARP chance. That's funny. Like, I... <clears throat> I admire their ingenuity. Because <laughs> they pulled it off. You got to give him some credit for that. I, I, uh, and yet, no. 
I mean, you, if you want to be a police officer, you got to wait until you're 18 for one thing. Also, if you want to be a police officer, the best way to go about it is probably not breaking the law <laughs> in a specifically stealing from the police and impersonating them way. Uh, Jed the Jedi in the channel, hot peach fuzz. Uh, oh. Uh... <laughs> like, they're probably not going to let you in. That, after that's a that. different movie. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to let you in after that. Yeah, you're, yeah, that's the porn parody. Yeah, you're never going to be a cop now. None no. of you will ever be. They take that shit personal. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess you're all minors, so it won't be on your permanent record, at least. I mean, geez, it's like we've got the police cars. What could go wrong? We're, uh, that's all you need, right? You got the car, you got the radio. I'm a cop now. That's it. That's how it works. Right? Of LA? Because what could go wrong really depends uh, on whether they were in Beverly said, Hills or Compton. Said South Los Angeles. I don't really know what that means. I don't know either. LA's too like, big. What could go wrong is very different between I accidentally pulled over a celebrity and I got shot. Yeah. I just... Fuck. 15. Fucking 15 year old. Teenagers are the worst. They really are. They are the absolute. Teenagers are the goddamn worst. I was a teenager, and I was the worst. I never did any shit like this, and I was still the worst. Yeah. Probably the worst thing I did as a teenager was get into a huge popcorn fight in a movie theater, and that was some bullshit. Like, many years in the service industry has taught me that that was some bullshit to do, and I was an asshole for doing it. Hmm. They never stole a fucking cop car. And the bulletproof. I just love the bulletproof vest part. Yeah. I mean, I guess you were prepared, so that's that's good. Oh. I mean, my God. Why Why would you... Like, teenagers should all be forced to live in a simulation until they're, like, 20. So that they still get socialized and learn how to exist in society, but we don't have to put up with them <laughs> while we're doing it. Like... I feel like as soon as you hit like age 12, you should go into the matrix <laughs> until age 20 so that you don't lose out on the socialization, but we don't have to put up with your bullshit. I think that would make the world a better place. Uh, so, yeah, I guess, I guess the first thing we learned this week is don't leave teen Don't let teenagers be unsupervised or they will steal fucking cop cars and go pretend to be police. Maybe don't leave them unsupervised in the fucking police station. We've learned if you want to attempt to... Oh, Compton is South L.A., so yeah. a lot could have gone wrong. Yeah. We want to learn that... We learned that if you want to attempt to leave military service, a scheme is not the way to go about it. No. Uh, uh, I mean, you might not be able to get out right away. Like an honorable discharge, you have to work yeah. out your service term. So right. it might be a year or two, and that might suck. Like... I didn't join the military because I wouldn't last a fucking day. So I'm sure it's not easy. The stories he's told me, terrible. Sounds right. awful. Three months without a shower. But but you signed your fucking life over, man. Like We've learned that um, sometimes a concerned neighbor is all that stands between you and the end of your meth dealing. And that's one to grow on. <laughs> I, I, if you're gonna make and sell meth, don't live in a place with neighborhood watch. I love I that. I love that they were busted by somebody trying to do the right thing. Just be like, "Oh, I'm looking out for my neighbors." You sure are. Don't live in a good neighborhood and sell meth. We've learned not nothing good happens when you snort things, Tara. I don't know, man. <laughs> Great, go go get some Pepsi out of the fridge and shoot, put that right up your fucking nose. Tell me how that works out. I get migraines. And a coworker at a former job, I had the worst migraine one night. Like I was, I was barely functioning at work. Like I was nauseous, whatever. She gave me this stuff and it has, I forget what kind of pepper. It's a nose spray and it has something like capsaicin from some really hot pepper. And she's like, it's going to hurt like hell, but trust me in 20 minutes, you're going to feel great. And I'm telling you, like, I also had a cold, so it didn't actually burn that much. 20 minutes that migraine was fucking gone it was amazing that was a spray not a powder i'm just saying i snorted it and i got better 
And finally, we've learned this week, kids, you got to be critical about your news story. You've, you've got to learn to spot fake shit. Due diligence. If yeah. there's not a link to an, ori an original story in the article, I usually don't trust it. Yeah. Look, I mean, like if there's not a link to a reputable news source. Uh... Basic stuff. Look for proper names in the story. Look, look, Google it. Quick thing, find a proper name in the story, Google that name and see if any other news report comes up. If it doesn't... Fuck a dateline, like a location in yeah. all caps at the beginning of the story. This this story doesn't even have a byline on it. It doesn't right. have a And they're like, by. local woman, well, local woman from fucking where? Yeah. Just, it, just, yeah. Due diligence. And don't don't send it. And so maybe next time you won't send me stories about a fidget spinner slicing off a dude's dick. Also, don't slice off your dick with a fidget spinner. Because that that's yeah, you're right. By the end of the year, someone's gonna cram a fidget spinner up their. They body. are. It's a given. Nobody ever crammed jelly bracelets up the ass. What, what what's going on? Is Nash having a seizure? Mine's frozen, still shaking. Nash, do a Max Edward voice. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs>